So we left off at the part of the text where Christine has seen, she's been reading the Lamentations of Mathiola, she sees all these opinions about women that are really negative, and she's like, why did you make me a woman, God, if, if this is what women are like? And there's this moment where these three, um, these three beautiful ladies wearing crowns a appear to her. They're, they're like a vision. And uh, the, the first one of these three ladies, who we'll refer to as Lady Reason, points out to Christine that all of these philosophers um, and writers who have expressed these negative opinions are actually prone to contradicting themselves. So it's not like what they are saying is the, the gospel truth. Um, Lady Reason says, it seems that you think that all of the words of these philosophers are articles of faith and that they could never be wrong. Um, just because they're in print, right? And and Lady Reason cautions her, like, don't think that just because these people are writing these things down that, that they couldn't be false. Um, so Reason then tells Christine that um, these three crowned ladies have been sent to her by God and that their purpose in visiting Christine is to help her establish and build the city of ladies. And um, the city of ladies is, is what this book becomes. Um, and it is, it's meant to be this, uh, like a debunking of all of these myths about women. So the three ladies identify themselves. Um, first we have Lady Reason, then you have Lady Rectitude, and finally you have Lady Justice. So the three parts of this text, um, are Christine talking to each one of the, the crowned ladies. Um, and she, we're going to spend most of the time talking about Lady Reason because um, she's, I, she has the most important things to say, I think, um, and her part of the book is the longest anyway. So uh, Reason tells Christine to go to the field of letters and begin excavating and, and digging her foundation that's going to become her city of ladies. Um, the city of letters just means, or the, the field of letters just means, like, go read a bunch of books, go look at all these opinions. And Christine asks Lady Reason, why have so many authors spoken so badly about women? Um, now, Reason tells her, look, this behavior most certainly does not come from nature. This behavior is contrary to nature. So uh, already we're seeing a really different kind of text from Aquinas, where Aquinas says, you know, oh, the natural law says this. Women were made as a helpmate in procreation. Therefore, that's all they are. Um, Chris, uh, Lady Reason is like, these, these opinions are not natural opinions, and, and they don't come from any laws of nature. Then she tells Christine, you know, some of these opinions were written with really good intentions. Uh, and Christine is like, well, you know, because they have good intentions, is that supposed to make their words right? Um, now, Lady Reason tells Christine, look, I can assure you that these attacks on all women, when in fact there are so many excellent women, have never originated with me. They've never originated with reason. Therefore, they are not rational attacks on women. Um, it's, it's not, remember we looked at scholasticism with Aquinas, and Aquinas is trying to bring in Christian philosophy with Aristotelian philosophy and, and arrive at this really rational approach to the universe. But Lady Reason is like, these opinions about women are not rational. They didn't come from, from reason. So she tells us, you know, some of these opinions are from these old and bitter men who, um, when they were young, they enjoyed the company of many women. And now, because they're old, they find themselves rejected by women. So um, she says, these, these men have found no other way to avenge the pain of their impotence except by attacking women who bring joy to many. So, um, basically it's like, like, nice guy syndrome, um, or somebody who was a player in the past and now, like, women don't want to go near him because he's old and gross. Some of the negative opinions, she says, are born out of jealousy. So she says, those men who have attacked women out of jealousy are the wicked ones who have seen and realized that many women have greater understanding and are more noble in conduct than they themselves. And thus, they are pain and disdainful. Um, and she uses the Roman poet Ovid to illustrate this point. And Ovid is known as somebody who's really intelligent, um, a, a wonderful poet, but you know, Lady Reason is here questioning his authority and questioning what he says about women. So that's that's kind of a big deal. 
Um, so, so Lady Reason says, look, there's a difference between appeals to nature and appeal to God. Aquinas says that these are one and the same, right? But um, Lady Reason gives the example, God formed the body of woman from one of Adam's ribs, signifying that she should stand at his side as a companion and never lie at his feet like a slave, and also that he should love her as his own flesh. So basically, she's taking the Bible and flipping it on its head and saying, all of these, all of these justifications you have used in the past from the Bible to signify the inferiority of women, they're actually misinterpretations of the scripture. So scripture has been misinterpreted. Um, the belief that man was made in God's image uh, has been believed to refer to the material body, but Lady Reason says, no, it's really, it's really talking about the soul, and God created the soul and placed wholly similar souls, equally good and noble, in the feminine and in the masculine bodies. Um, and then she she tackles the the Adam and Eve story, right? So we've seen Eve labeled as like the temptress, right? Who is responsible for the fall of mankind? And Lady Reason says, if any anyone was to say that man was banished because of Lady Eve, I tell you that he gained more through Mary than he lost through Eve. For as low as human nature fell through this creature woman, was human nature lifted higher by this same creature. So she's like, okay, fine. Eve is responsible for the fall of mankind. But guess who's responsible for the saving of mankind? Mary, mother of Jesus. Um, and that's a, that's way more important than, than anything that, that happened with Eve. Uh, Christine and Lady Reason discuss the physical appearance of women, and so Christine is asking her, you know, what about these men who say that women go, go to church all dressed up just to show off, to show off their beauty and attract men to their love? Um, and Reason says, do you only see young and pretty women at church? Um, if you did, that would be believable. And if it's true that women possess such piety as, as to be um, present in church and revered, within um christianity they also possess charity so who is it she asks who visits and comforts the sick who is it who helps the poor and takes care of the hospitals and buries the dead antigone right it seems to me that all of these are women's works and these are the same works these same works are the supreme footprints which god commands all of us to follow so this is the first instance we have of women's work actually seen as important, as something that's really important, and that's something that God values. Uh, they tackle the question about whether women are too emotional, and Reason says, you know, I tell you that if our Lord Jesus Christ had believed that women's tears came only from weakness and simple mindfulness, the dignity of his most great highness would have never, would never have been so inclined through compassion to said, shed tears himself from the eyes of his worthy and glorious body when he saw Mary Magdalene and her sister Martha weep for their dead brother Lazarus. Um, if women are emotional, you know, okay, but look at all the special favors that God has bestowed upon women for their tears. He didn't despise the tears of Mary Magdalene, but he accepted them, and he forgave her sins, and through the merits of those tears, she is in glory in heaven. So, um, if, if women are, are emotional, that's not it's not a negative thing and it's actually it can actually be really positive within Christianity. He also she also says that God endowed women with the faculty of speech and remember that um it's Mary Magdalene who reports and announces the resurrection of Christ when he appears to her. She's the first person to see that he's gone from the tomb and he appears to her and she goes and tells she goes and tells everybody and that's that's really important. And Christine is like, yeah, I, I, some preachers have told me that God appeared to a woman because he knew that she couldn't keep her mouth shut and that she would spread word really quickly. So even something that's positive about Mary Magdalene has been flipped on, on its head and turned into something super negative. Like, oh, women, they're so gossipy and they can't keep their mouths shut. Uh, and then so part one continues with Lady Reason giving all of these examples of these strong and powerful and noble women from history and from mythology. Uh, and I'm going to stop this one here and uh, come, and I'll continue with the next one.